scholar and uh, she is a very dedicated uh, towards their children and uh, dedicated towards her husband also and uh, very much interested in learning new things so aa uddesham lone nenu why can't you train children parents anna vishayam lo this uh, uh, slide presentation is going on okay madam carry on okay thank you srinivas garu um so basically um i i am i'm madhuri madhuri gargi party and uh, i grew up in hyderabad and i am living in california for the uh, hello srinivas garu carry on madam yeah yeah under okay. audio mute cheskondi so basically i've been living in california for 19 years now and uh, i have two boys 15 and uh, 8 and i while growing up my mother was a uh, tuition teacher so i taught kids for almost 16 years while growing up kids as i was growing up i was teaching kids of my age and younger age and things like that so i have spent a lot of time with kids have seen several personalities have understood a lot about kids and i think that is the one which gives me patience to deal with kids i love kids and um i've been volunteering a lot in my kids school as well so i think uh, i have learned a lot about kids and that's what i'm going to share with you today so i love this quote uh, it says the sign of great parenting is not the child's behavior the sign of truly great parenting is the parent's behavior so with that note let's see what we what we want to understand about parents behavior right this is more about parents and not about kids so we would like to understand what is it that we can do right i think parenting is an opportunity a beautiful opportunity that is given to us to build our future we all want right. to be together we all can build a better world often people complain that the world is not good there is so much crime in the world there is you know um people are not behaving properly all all kinds of yes. things that are being the wrong yes. things that are happening in the world right so these results of the people who kids before who have turned out to be adults in a different ways so what we currently have we cannot change the past we cannot change the present of how it is right now but what we can do is we can build our future which is in our hands that is each one of us has a responsibility to build our kids to raise our kids in a way that they can create a better world for us right we can leave a beautiful world behind us um by just raising our kids with great values so obviously today's kids are tomorrow's future right so we can we have this amazing power with us if we can unleash the power we can really change how the future unfolds right so parenting is i think according to me a parent is a superhero with super powers um i watch a lot of um superhero movies with my kids uh, iron man superman spider man so i thought parent is a really great superhero with so many super powers that one um we have the ability to create and develop humans based on great values right i mean every parent is different every parent has their own superpower you have your own values i have my own values and the best part is we can raise our kids to inculcate those values so that they can go to the world with those values and make it a better place so i feel that every single parent out there is a superhero with lots of superpowers and one of the greatest superpower that we can give our kids is emotional intelligence we all have gotten squared away the thing that we we can send our kids to great schools we can send them to tuitions we can teach them math all the subjects they want to know we can teach them what are the subjects you need to learn in school what is the what are the academics you need to learn to earn a better job to earn money all these things you know they are proven techniques and we all can do it we have proven that we can do that that's easy peasy right but emotional intelligence is the one which i think is the most important ingredient that is missing in today's world iq is there 
most of the kids today are super smart. Just given the information we have out there, the internet we have out there, the schools, the kind of teaching, everything, right? IQ is not a problem. Most of the kids are very smart. They, they study, they get it. Otherwise we can offer them coachings or you know, whatever. It's, it's not a problem at all. EQ, emotional intelligence, emotional EQ is emotional quotient. So that is a superpower. What is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence, basically a person has to understand what is going on in a given scenario. You know, if, if you enter a room and if you see what is going on inside a room, um, what do you sense? I mean, do you sense the mood of the room? Do you see if the person is happy, if the environment is tense? So we have to change our behavior based on the setting that is emotionally understanding what is going on with different people, right? If you're talking to your boss, if you're talking to your spouse, if you're talking to your girlfriend or fiance, what is the mood they are in right now? That How do we react to it? Because often what happens is people come out as very insensitive because they do not understand the other pers people's perspective. They do not understand what is going on in other person's mind, right? So they just come say, let's say I had a very happy day today. I come, you lost your job. I am you didn't tell me of course that you lost your job but you're all sulking and you're very sad i should not, i mean of course i want to share my happiness with you let's say i did that but later i have to sense that something is going on with you and try to understand what's going on with you right that kind of understanding will make you much more closer the bonds will increase the relationships will increase and i think that is something we have to show our kids like first we should understand their emotions right if we understand their emotions then they are they are learning that this is how any scenario has to be dealt with they are understanding all that and then they are growing up to be emotionally very smart so i think emotional intelligence is the best superpower that any parent can inculcate into their kids right early on right give them that power so that they're used to that and then they use it throughout their relationships their job their studies their college anywhere and it just unleashes the superpower in them i think that's amazing so now, I, I mean, we all go to different classes. Our parents put us in different classes, right? Music, dance, sports, everything. We do all those things. But did any of you go to a parenting class? I didn't. I don't think there is a parenting class anywhere out there. Um, we are not taught to how to parent because there is nothing. It's not a constant thing, you know? How my grandma raised my mom? My grandma was in a village. She raised my mom saying that it, she was in Agraharam, you know, it's like it was frowned upon when a girl even stepped out of the house by herself. So my mom raised in such an environment and she got married and she moved to Hyderabad. It's a big city and she was totally confused. She had a daughter, me. And then she was like, oh my God, how do I raise a girl in this big city? How can I, you know, she was totally confused because how she was raised not implement all those rules on me it doesn't work you know and then my mom raised me i saw her how she raised me and then i came to us of course i don't have a daughter but i have boys but i cannot use those parenting skills with my kids because it is a different country it's a different culture it's a different language my kids don't know how to speak telugu well they don't understand telugu well <laughs> they can understand my mom but if i have to yell at them or if i have to counsel them if i have to lecture them i go into english because they won't get it otherwise so it is you know things are different now if i raise my kids if i say this is the values right i cannot expect them to follow that when they are parenting their kids. So according to me, parenting is a unique experience that everybody has to go by themselves. It is up to you. It is completely up to you. And again, if I raise you in a certain way and then you go and you're parenting your kids, there is one more variable in that, right? Your spouse. Your spouse has come from a completely different parenting background. How is, I mean, it is clash of titans, right? Whose parenting is the best? Is it mine or yours? So I think parenting is something which we all have to experience. And the only way we learn is by experimenting. And I really feel bad for the oldest kids in the family because we always experiment on the oldest kids, right? And then we learn our lessons and like, oh, this didn't work, that didn't work. And we fix it for the younger kids. So I think parenting is something, it's a unique experience that you come unprepared and you learn as a parent 
every day. It's not if your parents are all grown up and have gone to college, it doesn't matter. You are still learning to be a parent, right? So, but there are, that said, it is not lost cause. We do have some, our culture, our Puranas and our Shastras and everything have given us some guidelines on how to parent, right? There is this sloka, um, which I love. When I asked my mom, what would she tell this generation on how to parent kids? Right away, she came up with this. She said, you have to say this. Um, it says, Lalayet pancha varshani, dasa varshani tadayet, prapte tu shodase varshe, Putram Mitrava Dacharit. It means Lalayet Panchavarshani. Until they are five years old. Lalayet, Lalinchali. Prema Kachubin Chudali Vandani. Love them, right? Dasa Varshani Tadayet. From five years until they are 10 years old, for the 10 years, right? Discipline them. Tadayet in the actual meaning of Tadayet is hit them, right? Uh, hit them, cane, use a cane kind of thing. But in olden days, the, the, when the sloka was written, I, we all had like, you know, parents would, wouldn't hesitate to slap you or hit you or teachers would hit you with a cane. It is not a big deal, you know, but now, no, you cannot do that. At least the country I'm in, social services will come and take your kids away if you even touch them, you know, that's not an option. But I'm not saying it should be an option, you know, you need not hit your kids. You need not, um, it, it's, it's. I think in this generation, what we can say is instead of hitting them, it's like discipline them, right? Teach them the right morals. Does it mean don't love them? No, it is not that. Um, you all, we all love our kids, right? We love our kids so much that we do everything for them. But the love should not be in a way that it should not cross the pamper thing. It shouldn't become that in a way that they are spoiled, right? Whatever they do, it's okay. I love my kids. I don't want to say anything to them. No, that doesn't work. You have to discipline them. They have, there are some basic rules, right? You have to respect everybody. An adult has to be respected. All our culture, all our values, everything says, Matru Devo Bhava, Pitru Devo Bhava, Acharya Devo Bhava, Atiti Devo Bhava. Everybody has to be respected. They earn their respect. It doesn't matter. You might come in home and say, oh, my teacher is not so good. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I can do better math than her. Doesn't matter. You can do better math than her, but can you go stand there in front of a class day in and day out, go for 365 days, teach what she's teaching, handle a class, earn the money. Can you do all that today? No, I don't think so. If you cannot do that, you better go and respect her. It doesn't matter. If you think you are smarter than her, sit in the class, come and do whatever you want to do. Don't take the notes from her, that's fine. But you have to respect her because wherever she is, she earned that spot and she deserves to be respected. You know, that's how we need to teach our kids. We have to tell them irrespective of who it is, whether it's a janitor, gardener, cleaner, doesn't matter who it is. They are there in their position, rightfully so, doing what they can. Unless you think you can do that job day in and day out without complaining, you cannot be them. You have to respect them for what they're doing. So I think if we teach our kids that kind of values, they try to see everybody. You know, if they go to a restaurant, they're nice to a waiter. They're respectful to a waiter. If you know, if you go to a, a mall, they're respectful to the person, security person, you know, things like that. They have to see everybody respectfully. They have to treat everybody as equal. It doesn't matter what stage in life they are or status should not, basically kids should never be taught about status. You know, this is high, high this is low. Um, you have to respect these kind of people. You don't have to respect these kind of people. No, it shouldn't be taught that way. I think we have to teach them to love everybody and respect everybody, irrespective of who they are. They are there for a reason. They have their own reasons. Don't have to know all those things, but just respect them, right? Those are the good values and morals we can teach when they are from five to 15 years old. Because after that, what happens is kids kind of become um, adolescent and they, they, are, they think they are adults. They are not. The thing is, one thing I really like to say is kids in their teenage years, they know enough to think that they know everything, that they're right. They don't know enough. They don't know to the depth that they don't know that they are wrong you know so with that limited knowledge they feel that oh i know everything right I i'm great i know everything amma you didn't study here you didn't study in this country you don't know no i do know i don't have to study in this country some basic rules are basic rules irrespective of you know it doesn't matter so parent i think we have to respect them and when we are disciplining them from 5 to 15 years we are showing them a command you know that 
I am not going to entertain nonsense from you. I love you to the most. I will do everything for you. But when it comes to some rules, you have to follow them. If you don't, sorry, you're going to get a consequence. If you do that right, they are looking for that. Kids need structure. They need structure. They are looking up to you. If you don't provide structure, they collapse. They fall. And then when they fall, they don't know what to do. So they resort to whatever they feels right for them, right? So we cannot blame today's people, whoever is doing bad things or whatever, saying that, oh, these are rude, they, these are rude people. They don't know how to behave. They, are, they have become thieves. They have become this. They have become violent. That is because their childhood was not good. So if we don't like what we see today, it is on us to fix all those things, right? So when you do all these things right, then automatically by the time they're 16, they become our friends. We become their friends. Who is a friend? A friend is non-judgmental. I'm sorry, I have to admit something. So a friend is somebody who is non-judgmental, who is trustworthy, who is respectful. Why do you think we can share anything with our friends, not even with our family, right? Let's say I want to gossip about my mom or, you know, you know, but I got so upset. My mom, she was talking about my brother and this, does that. I cannot tell that to my family. They are going to gossip and things are going to go everywhere. But I can go and tell a friend everything. You know, I can tell a friend about my husband, about my kids, about my bhavi, about everybody. I can gossip. I can do whatever I want because they don't judge me. They, I trust them that they won't spread the news. And they are respectful because they know me so much. And if they are my great friends, they are going to even not hesitate to tell me that I'm wrong. Hey, in this case, I think your mom is right. Your husband is right. You know, that is a true friend. Now, why do people have such great friendships, but not such great relationships? Because in relationships, you don't find that friend element. You don't find those basic uh, pillars of non-judgmental, trustworthy, respectfulness in a parent. You know, parents always judge kids. Hey, don't do that. Don't wear that. You're wearing the tie wrong. You're wearing the sari wrong. You don't know how to do this. You don't know how to do that. That is how parents talk. Instead, hey, did you consider draping the sari the other way? I think if you drape it this way, it would be good. Hey, did you consider wearing the purple tie instead of that yellow tie? I think the blue shirt is really, the yellow is glaring off. Why don't you wear that? You know, that is how a friend would talk. Friend won't say, hey, that is wrong. Don't do that. You're wrong. You know, so I think we have to become a friend at the time they're age 16 so that they can really come and confide in us, you know, because they're at the at age of 16, they are still very fragile. They're still very innocent. They think they know everything, but they don't, you know, so they need some kind of person to fall back on. They need some person to say, Amma, I think my friend is doing this. I, I think they are drugs. I don't know. They should be able to come and confide in you, you know. When my son was turning 13 or 14 in school, they had this uh, course on drugs, on what are drugs, how to identify them, what to do when you see somebody who, if you think they are drugs, what to do, you know, all the drug kind of, you know, around involving that. So he came and told me, Ahmad, I did this course, right? And he told me about everything. Then I told him, Pranav, I'm going to tell you this, and this implies to no matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. You might be 40, you might be 50, 60, it doesn't matter. Whenever you're in trouble, you should think always that Amma and Nana will help you, no matter what, unconditionally. You get into trouble, you can come to us. You, let's say you are not doing wrong, you are tagging along with your friends, but they did something wrong and you all are stuck. Doesn't matter. Feel free to call us any time of the day. It doesn't matter. We are going to come, pick you up, take you. We are not going to judge you. We are going to see what is the best that you can do. Because often when you are in a situation, you don't know what is going on and your brain doesn't function to take the right decisions. So you can trust us that we will be doing what is needed to help you. And we are not going to tell your friend's parents anything bad about them. We are going to do what is the best in that scenario. When you say that, your kids have that sense of, okay, my mom is not going to kill me when she finds out that I was tagging along friends who were doing drugs, you know? So I told him, it doesn't matter. Accidents happen, mistakes happen. It doesn't matter. Come to me, call me anytime. I will come and pick you up. I will make sure you all are safe and then we can take it from there. You know, that is how I personally feel that you should give them that sense of security blanket, you know, that I can go to my mom and dad no matter what. That is what is um, important, I think, at this uh, after 16, right? My kid is 15, so I don't know after 16 what happens. Uh, so I can tell until what is 16. Um, understanding a child. I think. Kids are constantly experimenting. They don't know what is right, what is wrong, what is going to piss them off. Is she going to be mad at this? 
can I do this? My younger one is the perfect example. He literally, when, I, when I'm working, he comes and sits and yesterday he was saying, Amma, I want to see what you're working on. I'm like, okay. And I was actually deploying code on a server and he was watching and he said, what are you doing? And he didn't understand what I was doing. He was watching all the screens. I have two big monitors. He was watching, watching all the screens and he's like, what happens if I type something? I said, don't, this is a production server. Don't type, you said you'll watch it and watch. And then he's like, oh, what if I put a letter Z on it? He was constantly you know, pushing my buttons. He wanted to do something. He was excited about it. So instead of me showing him away, saying that, hey, just get lost. I'm doing a very important thing. I don't want you here. I know you're going to do something. Instead, I entertained him. I said, you know what? You can sit here as long as you maintain the social distancing of COVID of six feet away. You sit there and you watch, you're fine. You touch anything. It's think it's like COVID, you know? You're going to catch that something. There's a virus in my computer. It's going to touch you. You know, make it a joke out of it, right? Don't, don't just say, because he was bored. He was sitting at home. He was bored. I was working long hours. So they're constantly experimenting. They want to be with you. They want to see what you're doing. So... I think we need to understand them. We need to provide answers to them. We need to understand their point of view, right? Uh, so because he thought it was super cool to work on my laptop as a grown-up, after I finished my work, I opened an empty console and I said, okay, you know what? Whatever you want to do, do now. Try it now. And he was like, he started typing, oh, I am Prahlad, I am this, I am a second grader, I am 80-year-old, I am watching this TV show. He started typing and he felt super happy doing all that in another computer he thought okay i'm working right now so what do we do to make it public <laughs> you know so it's he felt so happy after doing that so you have to understand what is it that they want out of this right they are not there to bug you they want to be part of you they want to be involved so involve them and respond to a situation instead of reacting to it right and for all this patience is the key i think if we are patient um we can we can really get into their world we can really understand and look at the picture here. Mom is sitting down to reach the eye level of the kid. Because when you're standing and looking down to them, it's an authoritative figure, right? They get scared of you. Instead, sit, match the eye level, then they think you are their equal. And then you hug them and say, what's going on? So, you know, all those things, they, I think they love it. And once you provide that kind of atmosphere, it's super awesome and happiness. And it's really, really cool feeling when you work with kids like that. And what are they really upset about, right? Usually kids throw tantrums. They, they often come and say, oh, this is the worst day of my life. You're the worst mom ever. I hate my life. These are the common dialogues you hear from all the kids, no matter what, irrespective of you give them golden parenting, doesn't matter, they still say it. You're the worst mom ever. I had the worst dad ever. He's so strict. He doesn't like me. You all hate me, you know? What is really happening? What, is, what are they really upset about? Never ever get upset by looking at what they say. They're all statements. I'm going to kill you. My God, my mom lives with me and she's like, this household never goes without somebody saying the word kill at least once a day. You know, <laughs> my older one says, I'm going to kill you to my younger one. My younger one says that to me. Everybody, right? And I'm going to say it something like, everybody gets upset. But what are they really upset about? You know, my son, when he comes in, like, what happened? It's like, I'm dumb. I'm the most dumbest kid in the world. My son, I'm not bragging, but he's really smart kid. <laughs> and he says, I'm dumb, I'm hurt, you know? I'm like, why, what happened? And he's like, um, you know, I was doing a math test and by mistake, I did 20 plus 30. I wrote it as 55. I don't know what I was thinking, okay? And Ben saw it and Ben said that you're so dumb, you don't even know that, you know? And I don't think I'll ever do math again. I'm like, okay, so that's fine. Let him think that way. Amma, but I'm really dumb. I should stop doing math. I should stop going to school. Okay. Why don't we do this? Let's eat something. Do you want chocolate? Do you want hot chocolate? Do you want a cookie? And he's like, you know, I'm slightly changing his mood to think, okay, get out of that spiral, right? Come out. And then we ate some cookies. We drank milk. And then later I said, hey, how about this? Tomorrow it's Friday, right? That's a math challenge problem. I'll drop you early to school. Why don't you be the first kid to go into the class and respond to that problem, answer that problem in the whiteboard and write your name, Prahlad? She always, his teacher always gives very complex problems as math challenge on Fridays. Why don't you go and do it? You know, by that way, you are not answering him. You don't have to go back and prove yourself how smart you are. By doing that silently, you are telling them that, see, I can solve this problem, can you? He really loved that idea. And next day morning, he was all up. He, he was 
thinking about what problem she would give. She was all excited. He woke up in the morning. He's like, he got ready by himself. He said, Amma, let's go, let's go. I dropped him and he came back and he had a wonderful Friday. He was so happy. He solved the problem. You know, things like this. It's usually whenever they're upset, it's not what it looks like. It's not what they're talking about. There is something else. As long as we just feel the layers and understand what's going on with them, that literally resolves their entire thing. Otherwise, it cooks up and becomes, you know, like a ball of emotions. And it all turns out into a bad personality, right? Rage, violence, and all those things. So every time you get an opportunity, if you take it out, resolve it, and let go of all the negative emotions in them, I think that's super awesome. And then my teenager, right? He comes home. He's a very disciplined kid. He's awesome. He's a very mature kid for his age. He comes one day and he just throws his backpack, stomps into his room. Now, that is not the time I get super mad saying that, hey, don't you know you shouldn't throw your bag? Is that the way I taught you? No, that's, he never does that. So when he did it once, that means there is something else going on, right? So you see this um, anger at the top, but underlying the emotions are so different. The helplessness, rejection, jealousy, embarrassment, shame, fear, you know, anything. He's in high school. So many things go on in high school. And here in this country, they start dating in high school. They have relationships. Let's say he likes some girl and that girl likes somebody else. The, come on, that is like <laughs> at a teenage level, that is really awesome. Like, you know, you really love somebody and then the crush and infatuation you have on a girl or somebody and then she doesn't even bother about you. That breaks their heart, you know. It's me and my husband joke about this all the time. It's like, hey, do you still have a girlfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Are you planning to have a girlfriend? It's like, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> but it's so much fun, right? But at the same time, uh, there is so much going on in kids' life. There is so much. Um, they're overwhelmed. They're everything. And at teenage, they don't want to share anything with you. So you don't expect them to come and tell you what's going on. My second, my eight-year-old comes and tells me everything. My 16-year-old, not so much. But if you just go and what I do is I go and say, hey, today, you know what? I had my work. I had this release and it got completely messed up. And my boss was like, what's going on? Are you planning to fix this? I tell something from my work story, which is, I think, a little bit related to how he's feeling right now. That is how I am feeling as well. But how I dealt with it, you know, I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to work right now. I'm going to take a two hour break. I'm going to spend time with my kids. Do you want to bake some cookies? Do you want to, do you want chocolate chip muffin or something? Come on, let's do it. Or do you want big pizza? So I do all those things. And while doing that, that's when they talk to me. Amma, you know what happened at school today? And then they tell me. So I'm giving them a platform to express their emotions. I am not asking them what's going on, why are you upset? Instead, I'm providing in a roundabout way. Yes, of course it is indirect. It's not, it, it takes time and patience, right? But you need to give them the platform so that they can come and express what's going on in their heart. Everybody wants to express. Everybody wants somebody to lean upon. They want somebody to hear their problems, but they want to know who that person really is. Can I trust this person, right? And then right away he says, please don't tell Nana all these things. I'm like, no, I won't. I won't tell him, you know, things like that. So every time your kids are upset or my kids are upset, it's like, it's difficult. Sometimes I don't. I'm telling all these things. These are, I do it most of the time, but sometimes I have my own issues going on and I tell them very clearly that, Today, I am in pain. I am I'm upset. I have a lot going on at work. So I'm not in a mood to entertain things today. So please stay away from me. Do whatever you want. Watch TV if you want. But today is not the day, okay? If you really have anything important, go and talk to Nana. Ask him. I cannot entertain you today. I tell them very clearly so that their expectations are set and they are not upset that I'm not listening to them. But then I make it up the next day. I take off from work. Whenever I had a crazy work day, I take off work from next day so that I can spend time with them. So as long as you're upfront and tell them and what they expect, basically set the expectations right, right? Then I think everything will be okay. So that's what it is. Ah, parenting in the digital era. So are devices to blame? Is it, my mom says that technology is ruining the world today and there is nothing parents can do. There is no, nothing we can try that, can take away devices from them or help them not get ruined by the devices, right? I think that's not true. Devices are there, yes. Do we have to give up the phone to the kid, smartphone to the kid? Yes. Uh, do we have to get them a laptop and everything? Yes, because they're learning. All the learning is going online these days. And this coronavirus thing, everything went online even more, right? 
So we cannot take away devices from them, but can you put parental controls? Can you stop them from watching YouTube? No, there are all kinds of YouTube videos there. Yes, of course we can put some parental controls, but I don't think you can control as much as you think you can. I don't think you can protect them as much as you want to them. I don't think you can put them in a bubble and say, this is what to the extent of which you can learn. You cannot see these sites. You cannot do all that, you know, you cannot. One thing what you can do is though, is a tech timeout, you know? take away the devices from them completely. But are they going to be outrageous? Yes, they're going to flip. They're going to be super mad at you because their friend is talking something on the chat, on WhatsApp, on Instagram. They're missing out on all that, you know? Now, how is a tech timeout possible, right? It is possible if we are planning to fill in the time with alternate options. You cannot just take away the device and say, go and sulk. They are going to hate you forever. <laughs> they are not going to like, no matter what you do. At that time, no chocolate chip cookie or hot chocolate will work. No, it doesn't work. So what do we do when we give that tech time out, right? We have to be there. Jigsaw puzzles, right? This is like, there are some super cool 3D puzzles these days. Uh, I, I went to India and I found this Taj Mahal puzzle. Um, it's a 3D puzzle. While you're, it's all the family can sit and make this puzzle, right? When you're doing it, you can talk about it. The other day uh, we were doing United States and world, all the countries in the world, we were doing the jigsaw puzzle and when everybody was sitting, we all had different ways of, you know, uh, doing the puzzle. And we are like, my younger one always starts in the middle. He loves, he sees, oh, I want to do India first. And he takes and he does India. And then he does Europe. And then, you know, based on whatever country it fancies him, he'll do that way. My older one, he fixes all the edges first, corners, you know, because it's easy. You can take a flat side and then you can fix it. And then my husband loves to build the oceans. And I love to see what are the tiniest islands are there. And I want, I love building them. Somehow I like doing the tiniest islands. I love to see how those shapes are formed and all that, you know. So it really, when you're sitting together, you are trying to understand. You know? you're trying to understand each other, how their perspectives are. You understand so much about the other person when you're doing things like this. You play board games, you play cards, you know, teach your younger ones how to play cards, um, caroms, cricket, anything, right? Cooking, baking, art, uh, read books together, watch a family, family movie together, right? We love watching all uh, Disney movies, um, DC, um, all the superhero movies, everything, right? We just love it. Uh, and we talk about it, we, we have, theories, we all could do PhDs on all the superheroes. That's how fanatic we are when it comes to movies. So we have to, we as parents have to come in, do all these things together. That's when they completely forget the device. It's just that last week, I didn't like my son's behavior to his music teacher. He was very rude. I gave him a tech timeout. I said, you're not playing Switch or any device for a week. Every day he was like, Amma, I miss my device so much. It's literally like an alcoholic, you know, withdrawal symptoms. I'm not kidding. He's like that. He's like, Amma, I think my hands are twitching. My fingers are twitching. I want to play something right now. It's so cute when you see an eight year old saying that. But do you see, they have become like this. They've become so dependent on devices that they just cannot think of doing anything else. So we sat and we do all these puzzles and, you know, jigsaw puzzles and movie night and make popcorn and give them and watch movie together ice cream do gardening all those things he completely forgot after one week he didn't ask me for it <laughs> he completely forgot about it so there is possibility there is still it doesn't matter the age of the kid I, I take it away from my older one all the time i take away his phone i say sorry you didn't turn it you have to you know finish your homework before you take it it works as long as you are willing to do it by yourself I, when I say I'm taking away your phone, I put my phone away too. I don't sit on my phone and say I'm taking away your phone because it doesn't work. We have to walk the walk, right? And Gandhi, he said, be the change you want to see in the world. So be a role model for kids, right? And whenever, see, be the change you want to see in the world. Forget about the world. Be the change you want to be with your family. Be the change you want to be with your kids, with your husband, with your wife, with your mom, with your brother, you know? we have to do what we are preaching others to do. First, we have to do it because otherwise you won't know the pitfalls in it, right? You do it, you find out the pitfalls, you find out a workaround, then you are prepared and confident enough to give that lecture to somebody else because when they come up with questions, you have all the answers with you. So they will watch us and learn. So if we put away the device and we are not hooked to the device, they will not. It is not at all fair that we are on the device all the time and we telling them, you are doing too much device. No, that doesn't work. 
you know so we have to see how how do we want the world to be that's how we want to train our kids that so that they will grow up with those values and change the world for a better place to be right oh mother's teachings i love this so jijabai i don't know how many of you know i think our generation still knows jijabai we studied in history books when we were growing up shivaji's mom she is a role model for mom right i mean how a mom should be there at like statues and everything in maharashtra with uh, uh, you know how shivaji grew up and everything he saved the hinduism and all that but for this generation if you don't know who shivaji is or shivaji's mom jijabai is let's take shivagami from bahubali right we see shivagami how she raises bahubali with the with, with the values right like she says when it comes to righteousness when it comes to following the dharma doing the right thing you question every person around it doesn't matter who it is that's what he does he questions his mom shivagami who raised him saying that this is the right thing to do i'm going to go with devaya what's her name uh, devayani i forgot uh, so basically he says this is the right thing to do i know i'm going against you but you taught me this way so teach your kids in a way that when they grow up they can question you if you are doing wrong they have to question you they have to fix you if needed they have to become your parents if needed that's how we should raise our kids you know oh just yesterday my father in law sent this to me i think this is an awesome addition to this uh, talk it says सुशीलो मातृपुण्येन पितृपुण्येन बुद्धिमा धार्मिको पूर्वपुण्येन स्वीयपुण्येन भाग्यवान इट सेज सुशीलो मातृपुण्येन बेस्ड ऑन युअर मदर्स पुण्य वॉट एवर शी डेड सुशीलत्व रईट गुड क्यारेक्टर यू गेट युअर गुड क्यारेक्टर बेस्ड ऑन वॉट युअर मॉम डिड रईट द गुड थिंग्स दट युअर मॉम डेड पितृपुण्येन बुद्धिमा you become intelligent i don't know what is the perfect english translation for buddhiman but we say buddhimantru right buddhimantru is somebody who is uh, i don't know if it's intelligence or good behavior or things like that they come from father for whatever good things that father did right putra uh, pitru punyena buddhiman dharmiko purva punyena we our dharma whatever dharma or righteousness you are doing it is based on your karma your purva punyam whatever we bagged right karma that is what it is swiya punyena bhagyavan the wealth that we earned in this life is completely based on you how well did you do what did you do did you like work hard did you study well um, you know were you sincere based on that you gain your wealth so i think because mother's punya and father's punya has is being sent to the kids it is on us to do good punya so that our kids become good character people it is based on father to do good punya so that their kids will become like you know intelligent and wise and everything so it is on us because they are becoming what they are or who they are because of who we are so we have to fix us to be able to help them that is the best inheritance you can give them not the crores or dollars millions of dollars of money if you earn it they earn much more than that you know it doesn't matter how much you earn or how much you save that is not going to help them that is like materialistic it will go away but the character and the intelligence and the values that you give them it will stay with them forever and it is going to go farther to their generations to their next generation so you are not just impacting this generation you are impacting several generation generations that are going to come forward you know so it's an awesome awesome job so in conclusion i believe the children are our future teach them well and let them lead the way parenting is a full time job it is it doesn't matter how many other jobs you have this is a parallel going on full time job patience is the only key it is very easy to get caught up in everything else and give parenting the least importance because we tend to prioritize our job our outside things our other things you know it doesn't matter parenting is a full time job which needs full time it do, i doesn't mean that you have to quit what you're doing i'm a full time mom i i'm been working from home for the past 10 years because i realized i'm not able it's not fair for me to come back at 6 o'clock in the evening all tired from my work and then try to teach something to my son he's tired he's you know he's he was 5 years old he didn't like going to i didn't like putting them in daycares i thought i can provide all the time with them whenever they are in school they are in school otherwise they are with me they are not in daycares they are not anywhere i was lucky enough to find a working from home job as a software engineer and i stuck to the job because it's i love what i do 
I'm very passionate about my job and it gives me the freedom to be with my kids all the time. So I've been working from home. I work, I'm, I'm a professional. I, I have never compromised my career. So you can get everything. It's just that you have to find the right balance. And patience is very, very important. You need to understand that it's only through patience that we can get to them. You know, we have to nurture our kids with love and care. It's like a garden. It's like what whatever you do, however much good care you give to the plants, that's how beautifully they'll blossom for tomorrow, right? So that's what we can do. So as a thank you, I wanted to thank Srinivas and Ranjit for giving me this beautiful opportunity. This is the first time ever I gave a talk. I, I give talks at work, um, but that is work. I, I am very proficient in the product I do and I never prepare slides or anything. I just talk impromptu. I'm really good at <laughs> talking spontaneously impromptu with, without any agenda. This is the first time ever I spoke to an agenda to stuck to a screen time and uh, you know, uh, the topic and everything. So thanks a lot. I don't have enough words to thank Srinivas and Ranjit for giving me this opportunity. And at first, when I sent my first draft, Ranjit gave the initial feedback and truly, truly respect your feedback. And I fixed all the slides based on that. And my husband did the Just correct the name. Huh? Rajini Khan, not Ranjit. Oh, I'm so sorry. There was, oh, who fixed this? Oh, I'm so sorry. I have to fix it. It's sorry. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, just remember our superstar Rajni Kant. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. This is. A, I think this is a typo. I sent the so uh, Prachi, right? Prachi did the aesthetics and sketches for me. I don't know if I changed it or by mistake she changed it. I don't know. I think it's autocorrect or something. I don't know. No problem. It's a good name for Rajni Kant. <laughs> Anything is acceptable. I'm so sorry, Rajni Kant. I'll fix that. Uh, but you know who you are and we all know Rajnikanth, right? So I don't think it's Ranjit in this room. <laughs> I think His hairstyle is also matches Rajnikanth stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Neelima, my friend, she did all the sketches and Prachi did the sketches of the superhero thing. And Prachi changed, transformed my slides. She's an interior designer. She entirely changed the look and feel of the slides. Uh, so aesthetics completely goes to her. The beauty of the slides is all her. And I took a couple of images from internet uh, and thank you all for being my first set of audience for my first talk ever. Thank you. Thank your you, ma'am, for taking Your kids uh, uh, are a uh, really inspiration for you. Yes, of course, my kids, they are, they are the ones who are inspiration for me. For me, I'm constantly learning from them. They are my universities. Good. Great man, thank you for taking this class. Uh, we 